Hello friends, welcome to my channel Strictly Logical. If you are new to my channel, please do subscribe to it. In my previous video, I have explained that if two lines are parallel, then they do not intersect on a common plane. That means those lines are coplanar. For detailed explanation, please check the video on parallel lines whose link is given in the description box. In this video, I am going to explain angles formed by two parallel lines and transversal. First, let's see what's a transversal. A transversal is a line that intersects two other lines. What is so special about a transversal? The answer is, when a transversal cuts or intersects parallel lines, several pairs of congruent and supplementary angles are formed. Today, I am going to talk about those congruent and supplementary angles. Consider two parallel lines P and Q with a transversal R. We divide the areas created by the parallel lines into an interior area and the exterior one. This is the interior region and that is the exterior region. First of all, let's see one of the very basic angles formed by two lines, which is vertically opposite angles. Here you can see that lines PQ is intersecting the line RS. Vertically angles are the angles opposite each other when two lines cross. Here you can see angle POS is equals to angle QOR. Vertical in this case means they share the same vertex which is the corner point O. There are two pairs of vertically opposite angles formed when two lines intersect. This is the second pair. These two angles are also equal. Now even if I change the angles, the vertically opposite angles will always be equal. Now talking about parallel lines, the first set of the angles is corresponding angles. When a transversal cuts across two parallel lines, there are eight angles created, four at each intersection. We can consider these in corresponding pair of angles with one at each junction. There are four such pairs, top left, bottom left, bottom right and top right. When the lines are parallel, the corresponding angles are equal. One of the very important point to note down here is the pair of the corresponding angles present on the same side of the transversal. They can be on top of the parallel lines, both the side, left and right, or they can be on the bottom side, but they must be on the same side of the transversal. When the lines are parallel, the corresponding angles are equal. Let's see here. These two pairs are corresponding angles. These are on the same side of the transversal and on top of both of the parallel lines. This is first pair of the corresponding angle. Similarly, we can find other pairs as well. Even if I change the distance between these two parallel lines, the corresponding angles will always be equal. Now let's measure the corresponding angles using protector and see if they are actually equal or not. So from this figure, you can see that angle 2 and angle 6 is one of the pair of the corresponding angles. Let's measure them. So I'm keeping the protector here. Adjust the protector properly. And here we can measure that angle 2 is 140 degree. Now keep the protector at angle 6. Again, we can see that angle 6 is also 143 degree. So these two pairs are corresponding pairs and these two angles will always be equal. Similarly, we can also measure the rest of the pairs of corresponding angles. The next pair of congruent angle is alternate angle. Alternate angles are categorized in two parts, alternate interior angles and alternate exterior angles. So friends, first of all, let's see alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles are a pair of angles on the inner side of each of the two lines, but on opposite sides of the transversal. To help you remember this, these angle pairs are on alternate sides of the transversal and they are on the interior of the two crossed lines. There will be two pairs of the alternate interior angles. First pair is this and second pair is this one. Alternate angles are always equal to each other. Even if I change the slope of the transversal, the alternate angles will always be equal to each other. Also, no matter how much apart are the parallel lines, alternate interior angles will always be equal. Now let's see what are alternate exterior angles. So friends, just like alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles are a pair of angles on the outer side of each of the two lines, but on opposite sides of the transversal. To help you remember, let me show you this thing again. The angle pairs are on alternate sides of the transversal and they are on the exterior of the two cross lines. Same as that of the alternate interior angles. Alternate exterior angles also have two pairs. This is first pair. Second pair is this. These two alternate exterior angles are always equal to each other. 
Now let's see the proof of the alternate angles. In this figure, we can see that angle 3 and angle 5 are the pair of alternate interior angles. So angle 3 must be equal to angle 5. Similarly, angle 4 must be equal to angle 6. Keep the protector properly so that the two lines overlap. And from here we can see that angle 3 is 45 degree. Now keep the protector at this point so that we can measure angle 5. Now the protector at this point and we can clearly see that angle 5 is 45 degree. So angle 3 is equals to angle 5. Similarly angle 4 must be equals to angle 6 because they are alternate interior angles. Now let's check for alternate exterior angles. So angle 2 must be equals to angle 8 and similarly angle 1 must be equals to angle 7. These pair of angles are on the exterior side as well as they are on the alternate side of the transversal. Now keep this protected at angle 1 and from here we can see that angle 1 is 45 degree. Angle 1 and angle 3 are also vertically opposite angles. So instead of 1, let's measure angle 2. Angle 2 is 135 degree. Here you can see it is 135 degree. Now let's keep this protector here so that we can measure angle 8. Now again you can see that this angle 8, this one is also 135 degree. That's why angle 2 is equals to angle 8 that is 135 degree. These are the pairs of alternate exterior angles. Now the question is how can we identify the alternate interior angles? I have a very simple way to identify these two angles. Tell me can you make a Z? Some people find it helpful to use the Z test for the alternate interior angles. If you can draw a Z or a backward Z then the alternate interior angles are the ones that are in the corners of the Z. Now the next set of the angles is co-interior angles or we can say it as consecutive interior angles. When two lines are cut by a transversal, the pair of angles on one side of the transversal and inside the two lines are called consecutive interior angles. These two angles which are shown in the figure, these two are consecutive interior angles. You can notice here that both the angles are on the same side of the transversal and inside these two parallel lines. So, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of the consecutive interior angles formed are supplementary. Means the sum of these two co-interior angles is equals to 180 degree. This is the first pair of the co-interior angles. Second pair is this. These two angles are supplementary angles. Just like co-interior angles, these two shown angles are the pairs of the angles on one side of the transversal but outside the two lines and these are known as consecutive exterior angles. So we can say that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal then the pairs of the consecutive exterior angles formed are supplementary means their sum is equals to 180 degree. This is the first pair and second pair is this. These two pairs of the consecutive exterior angles are supplementary. Even if I change the slope of the transversal or increase the distance between the parallel lines, these two pairs of the consecutive exterior angles and consecutive interior angles will be 180 degree. The highlighted pair of the angles are co-interior angles. 131 plus 49 is 180 degree. Similarly, these are the pairs of co-exterior angles and their sum is also 180 degree.